Hey guys, what's up? It's Rob Dotson from the Google Developer Relations team, and today I'm going to show you a brand new tool that we've just posted on the Polymer website, which we're calling Designer. Now, some of you have probably seen us playing around with this tool in our talks and in our demos. It's basically a drag and drop web components, sort of like builder editor type thing. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about it on Twitter, and so we've, we've gone ahead and we've just stood it up on the Polymer website so that everyone can play around with it. So to get started using this tool, you go to polymerproject.org and you go to slash tools slash designer. And you wanna make sure to have a trailing slash at the end of your URL. Uh, that's just part of our app engine setup at the moment. It's kind of required. Uh, so just make sure you've got that little trailing slash at the end of your URL or else you might not end up at the right place. Um, now, if you give it a second to load in, you should see something that looks like this. And there's a number of cool tools and palettes going on here, and I'm just gonna walk you through them really quickly. So up here in the top left, the first thing we have is this sort of like brackety looking button. And what this is gonna let you do is to hop into sort of like a code inspection mode. So you can actually get in there and see the code that the, the, the tool is generating, but you can also edit that code as well. And we'll sort of touch on that in a little bit. Uh, we've also got this uh, little save icon for saving the work that you're doing. We've also got a button right here to export the code that you've written to a GitHub gist. And lastly, we've got this button right here, which will let you preview your work in a brand new tab. Now, if you look over here on the right, we've got various uh, sort of inspectors for dealing with properties and CSS styles. And down here in the bottom, we've got palettes for showing different components that you can drag onto the screen. And we've also got a, uh, a tree view that is sort of interactive that will let you mess around with the components after they've been dragged onto the canvas. And we'll show all of that in a little bit. But to, to get us started, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna actually uh, open this up and grab a Polymer element out of this Polymer Core palette. So I'm gonna go down here and grab a Polymer Core card and drop that onto the canvas. And you'll see that our properties inspector over here on the right uh, highlights to show us that hey, there's some properties that we can work with. And also we can hop open to uh, this styles tab and see all of the different styles on this element that we can mess around with. Now what's really cool is that we can actually nest items inside of the elements that we drag onto the screen. So I'm going to drag out a Polymer Core field and drop that into this card. And then you'll see it sort of nests up inside of there and if we go back and we select our card, we can go over to its styles panel and do something like set the height to auto. And that will collapse the card down so that it is only as big as the uh, text input inside of it. Uh, now, another interesting thing that we can do is we can go over to this tree view, as I mentioned before, and inside of here, we can see all of the different elements that we're working with. So uh, here is the card that we've been working with. Also, here is the field. And then inside of the field, we've also got like additional nested items. We've got this icon here, and we've also got a text input for right here. So all of that is represented in this tree view. And if we want, we can click on any of these items and we can actually select the individual pieces. So when I click on core icon here, you can see that the icon is highlighted. I click on core input, it's gonna highlight the input, etc. So this is a really handy view to, to work with, especially when you've got a lot of nesting going on and you're trying to select one very specific item on screen so that you can change one of its properties or styles. Now, I mentioned before that uh, up here in the top left, we've got this sort of code inspector view. And what I wanna do now is jump into that so you can see what the actual markup looks like for these elements that I'm generating. So you can see here, we've actually got a core card because we dragged one on the canvas. We got a core field. And what's awesome is that, you know, this is just HTML. This is not super crazy markup. This is pretty easy to digest. And one thing that I think is especially interesting is that uh, as we're as we're working, as we're dragging items onto the canvas, we are actually just inside of one big Polymer element called my element. And so what we're doing when we're using this tool is we're just building a big Polymer element that we can then, you know, drop into our project if we want. Uh, we could, you know, build something really big and we could make it our entire project if, if we are so inclined. Or we could build something small, something that we just want to share with others or, or use in something that we're working on at the moment. Really, there's, you know, any way that you want to work with this tool, it's, it's sort of possible, which I think is, is pretty neat. 
Now, I'm gonna switch back to the designer view and I'm gonna actually build like a small application so you can see what it's like to, to actually get something realistic up on stage. So we're gonna go ahead and delete the core card that we've dragged out because we don't, we don't need that for what we're gonna be building. And instead we're gonna switch back over to our palette. I'm gonna drag out this element called core scaffold and drop that onto the screen. And you'll notice that it doesn't quite like fill the screen like I would like. It's kind of just like hanging out there. And so we've actually got this, uh, this little options button right here that you can click on. And if you bust that guy open, you'll see that there are various options for working with your elements. And the one that I want is auto size. And that's gonna tell my element to just fill its parent to the best of its ability. What it's really doing under the hood is it's just sort of like looking at your element, looking at the parent and deciphering what CSS should be used to make it fill. And you know, sometimes that means positioning things absolutely. Sometimes that means just setting like width and height to 100%. So uh, the, this button's kind of like a little magic button that just figures out how it should fill and it, it does the right thing for you, which is pretty rad. Now. I'm gonna add a Google map to this, uh, this scaffolding. So I'm gonna go over here to components, drag out a Google map element, drop that on the page. And then again, I can just click that auto size button to make the Google map the correct size. And at this point, I've got what's starting to kind of look like a bit of an application. So if I want, I can click this save button and it's gonna ask me to input a GitHub token. Now, uh, if you click this link here, it'll take you to GitHub where you can uh, generate your own OAuth token and drop it into the editor so you can save your work and more importantly, so you can uh, export it to GitHub Gist and also preview. So I'm gonna pause for just a second while I, while I put that token in there and then we'll resume uh, once, once we're all set up. So now that we've added uh, the token to our designer, we can go ahead and click the save button and we'll see a little alert in the top center of the screen letting us know that our work has been saved. Little pro tip, if you hit uh, command S, it will actually save your work as well. So that way, if you're kind of more used to the like reflexive keyboard shortcut style of saving, that, that will work as well. Now, with our work saved, we're ready to click this preview button. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pop open our work in its own tab so we can see the full glorious experience. And the nice thing about using the core scaffold element that we're working with here is that it has responsiveness sort of baked in by default. So as I scale the screen down, I get small enough, it's gonna actually push everything over to the side. And then when I click this little hamburger menu, it's gonna slide this drawer out where I can click these like different items in the sidebar, or I can click back in the primary content area and it'll, it'll hide the drawer again. So that's really cool. We've already got a basic responsive website and we've only just dragged a few elements onto the screen. Let's see how much further we can take this thing. So I've got these two items in my sidebar and right now they don't really do very much. And so what I'd like to do is I'm gonna click on them and I'm going to set item one here. I'm gonna change its name to roadmap. And we're gonna click on this item here and change its name to satellite. And we're gonna use these two buttons to actually toggle the type of map that we're looking at. And the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna hop over into the code and we're gonna find those two buttons. So here is, uh, here's the roadmap and here's the satellite. And we're actually just gonna write a little bit of code here. We're gonna say uh, on dash tap. When someone taps on the roadmap, I want it to run this show road method. And when someone taps on satellite, I want it to run this show sat function. And then down here in our element definition, we're going to define show road as a function and we're gonna say that show sat is a function. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take this Google map right here and we're going to change its map type property depending on which button was clicked. And to actually select the Google map so we can work with it, we're going to leverage its ID and this little feature of Polymer called automatic node finding. So any element that has an ID inside of a Polymer element, you can refer to just by saying this dot dollar sign dot 
whatever the ID is. In this case, the element is Google underscore map, right? That's its, uh, that's its ID right here. And so we can just say that we want this dot dollar sign dot Google underscore map. Now we've got that instance, so we can work with it. And we're gonna set its map type equal to roadmap when someone clicks on the roadmap. And we'll set its map type equal to satellite when someone clicks on the satellite. And we're gonna hit Command S to save. Switch back to our application. Let it all load in. Now, if you go and you start clicking these buttons right now, nothing's going to happen because uh, those those event handlers are not firing because the, the Canvas tool thinks that when we click on a button that we wanna like change its style or play with its properties or something like that. So what we gotta do is we actually gotta click the preview button to open our, our site in a new page. And once it's loaded in, now we can click on the satellite and we'll see everything update to satellite view or roadmap view, which is pretty sweet. Okay, so we have the basics of like an interactive site going, but I think we can go a lot further with this. So we're gonna go back over to our, uh, our palette of components over here. And we're gonna grab another component we're gonna grab a, a core field like we used much earlier in the video, and we're just gonna drop that into the top left of our uh, application. And we're gonna go over to the styles palette, and we can actually change the background color of this element because it's just a regular HTML element. So we'll set its background color to white, so it's a lot easier to see. And what I want to happen here is I wanna be able to type a search query into this field and I want it to show up on my map. And so to do that, I'm gonna use one more element. I'm gonna go over to this components palette and grab this Google map search element. Uh, this guy right down here. And what's interesting about this element is that it's a non-visual element. So if I grab it and drag it and drop it onto the screen, you're not gonna see anything visual, but you can, if you click on the properties inspector, see that you've now got some interesting additional properties to work with. You've got a map property and a query property. And if you go and look at the tree view, you can sort of scroll down and see that down here, you've got this, uh, this Google map search element that you can work with. So what I wanna do is I want to bind the search, uh, the search is map property to our Google Maps, and I want to bind its query to that text field that we laid out on the top left of our application. And so if I click this little binding button right here, I can go and I can find Google underscore map. Remember, that's the ID for our map. And I can say, hey, I want to bind to its map. And then for our query, our element up here, I can just tell you right now, its name is uh, core underscore input. So that's its ID that we want, and we're gonna bind to its value. And now any value that I type in here is going to tell the Google Maps search element to go and hit the Google Maps API and find that destination. And the last thing I need to do is I need to get that destination into the map. So if I use the tree view, I can go down here and select the Google Map. Again, my properties inspector is gonna update. I'm going to set its latitude. I'm going to bind that to Google Maps search result.latitude. I'm gonna bind its longitude. You can see it updating actually as we're working to uh, Google Maps search result.longitude. And I'm gonna set its zoom to 18 so we get like a nice zoomed in view. And if we hit Command S to save this, and we click on this uh, preview button again. Then we can switch over to the satellite view. We get this really cool overhead of San Francisco and we can search for the Eiffel Tower and whoosh, we get this awesome overhead view of the Eiffel Tower. And if you wanna take this one step further, if you're feeling really loco, uh, we can actually go back to our code editor and let's add one more element to the mix. We're gonna drop in this speech mic element, which is found in the, uh, the components palette. So we're gonna grab the speech mic right here and just drag it over to our input field, drop it in there. And in our tree view, 
we are going to bind our core input. The core input is the, the actual input inside of this core field element that we've been working with. So we're going to bind the value of our core input to the speech mic. And we want the transcript property of the speech mic. So now, anytime that you click on the speech mic and you speak into the computer, it's going to send that value to core input. It's going to send that value to Google Maps search. And then it's going to send it to the Google Map itself. So we save this, click on preview. We're going to click on our satellite over here in the sidebar to get that cool overhead view of San Francisco. And then we're going to click on the speech mic and we're going to ask it for the Roman Colosseum. So I click speech mic, I say allow Roman Colosseum. There we go. It had to think about it a little bit, but we did get there eventually. So that's pretty cool, right? We've got this whole application that we've built just by dragging elements onto the screen and binding them together. Now, one last thing that I want to show you before we head out is this little button right here. So you click this guy and it's actually going to show you all of your code in a GitHub gist. And so if you uh, take a look down here, you can see these are all of the imports that we were using. These are the styles to position everything. And these are the actual tags that we were working with. So this is cool because you can use this as a starting point for your project. You can you know, send this to your friends or your coworkers. Another thing that's really interesting is if you take a look at this hash right here and you go back to the designer, you'll notice that that's the exact same hash. And so what you can do is if you have access to these gists, you can just drop the hash in there and then uh, refresh the designer and it will open up that particular project. So if I just grab this URL, and totally trash the designer tab that I'm in now, open a new one, paste it in there, then you give it a second and it'll actually load in the project that we were just working with. There we go. So this is great, you know, if you wanna pass things around or, or play with them or share them, we're working on making sharing a better experience, but at least there is sort of the beginnings of it and we think that's pretty cool. Now, one last thing I wanna show you before I head out is where you can find the source code for the designer tool. Because a lot of folks want to actually like, you know, pull it down locally, play with it, tear it apart. So if you go to github.com slash polymer labs slash designer, this is the actual repo where we have all of the code for the designer tool. So if you want to pull this down, there are some very simple instructions on how to get it set up. And what I want to do after this is I want to do a follow-up video to show you how you can add your own Polymer elements to the designer, because that is totally possible. It's super easy. We don't have time to go into it today, but that'll be the next video that I record after this. So that'll be pretty exciting. Definitely stick around for that. Uh, again, be sure to check out the designer tool. It is at uh, polymer-project.org slash tools slash designer. Make sure to put that trailing slash on there so the URL works properly. We want to see the things that you build, so hit us up on Twitter at at sign Polymer or Google Plus at Polymer Project. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.